Integrity. I'm your host, Josh Porter, and today we're going to be talking about Florida Senate Bill 1702 and whether or not that has the potential to really change things here in Florida and be a model for the rest of the nation and the, and, and, and the world, really, for how to handle condos and to hopefully maybe see if, it, if something like this, something like this legislature um, can prevent the next uh, condo collapse, right? I also had the honor of talking to um, a couple of the attorneys for the Florida Senate, which was advising um, our, our Florida senators on this bill uh, before it got put into place. And I, I got to talk with them for an hour or two on the phone. So that was really, I got to, I got to give my two cents <laughs> in on it. Now, I don't know how much of it they used or not, but um, I will tell you, uh, despite all of those recommendations that we just went through, all those reports that we just went to, uh, Senate Bill 1702 is actually pretty darn good. First thing they do, I'm going to break this down into seven quick, quick, quick notes. First note is that the first thing that the Senate Bill 1702 does is it establishes a new term that we don't have currently in our industry called a milestone inspection. And I love this because instead of calling it a structural inspection or a building inspection or a condition survey, which can be confused with existing services that consultants provide, they decided to create a new term called a milestone inspection. I really like that because now it's very clear what we're all talking about when we talk about a milestone inspection in the industry. So a milestone inspection uh, has three pieces to it. One, it should attest to the life safety of the building. It should also attest to the structural components of the building, and it should, to the best of the engineer's ability, determine the general structural condition of the building. So these are very specific things that must be commented on in a milestone inspection report. Who should have these reports done? Again, owners of threshold buildings. So any buildings greater than three stories in height. Now, here's what I really like. They put a lot of thought into this, and this is something that I had recommended to the attorneys. I don't know if they actually followed you know, my advice, but it, it, it syncs up exactly with what I told them. One, the, 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 how often should this report be done, this milestone inspection report? Senate Bill 1702 says that the milestone inspection report should be done within 30 years of when the building was built, unless that building is called a coastal, is, is, is close to the coast. And what do they define as being close to the coast? Within three miles of the coast. So if the building is within three miles of the coast, that first milestone inspection done by a structural engineer should be done within 20 years of when the building was built. And that was a distinction that none of the other reports made. And that was something that I told the senators or the uh, attorneys working uh, in the uh, uh, for the Florida Senate. This is something I told them is like a distinction must be made between coastal structures and inland structures. And inland structures can go 30 years, no problem. But coastal structures should not go any more than 20 years without being inspected. Um, all right, so anyway, going on. They, they say that the uh, milestone inspections must be done within 30 years or 20 years if you're coastal, and then every 10 years or seven years thereafter. Now, again, the seven years, why seven? This is super important. One of the things I tried to explain to the attorneys uh, at the Florida Senate was that a building is typically painted every seven years. And the reason why is because of how long paint lasts, the way paint warranties are, and just simply, basically, most of it's driven by the painting industry. So if you're going to paint your high-rise building every seven years, and you've got all this expensive staging put up around the building, it's the perfect opportunity for an engineer to ride some of that swing staging and physically inspect the structure of the building. So again, I don't know if this was because of, uh, of anything I advised them on or if they had already decided on this seven year, but it's, it totally aligns with, with, with my thinking on the subject. So if it's a coastal structure, every seven years it should be inspected, a milestone inspection um, after its initial, and then if it's an inland structure, every 10 years thereafter. I think those are great years, great, great uh, time frames. Um, and then lastly, uh, if it's already, so once this law gets passed, if, if your building is already 30 years old, your first milestone inspection must be done by the end of 2024. That's pretty tight time window, to be honest with you, given the way laws work. And this law may not even get enacted until uh, I think July 1st is when they're hoping that it will get enacted if it passes everything. Um, so that basically means that associations have a year and a half to, to find an, an engineer and get this milestone inspection done if their building's already 30 years old. And trust me, there are lots and lots of condos just in Florida alone um, that, that, are, that are over 30 years old. 
All right, now what is the milestone inspection? It has two phases according to Senate Bill 1702. Phase one can be performed, again, by an architect or engineer. I'm not super excited about the architect part, but they were pretty clever on this. So phase one says an architect or engineer can perform, and then if there are no signs of distress observed, then we don't then you don't have to go into phase two of the milestone inspection but if signs of distress are observed and i wish they'd done a better job of like defining what that means is an architect qualified to determine if a building's in distress or not so these are all kinds of gray area questions but you can't expect a bill to do everything for you um so some of it's going to have to be done through precedence which is essentially how our law system works here in our country anyway so uh so then but let's say there are signs of distress and then you have to go into phase two. Well, then another inspection has to be performed by a structural engineer with a special inspector license, okay? I am a structural engineer, for example. I have a special inspector license. I am licensed to go and inspect threshold, uh, existing threshold buildings, okay? Now, phase two uh, requires a report done by a special inspector, and this report may involve destructive and non-destructive testing techniques. So they're saying, listen, we're not going to completely close architects out of, <laughs> of being able to do the phase one inspections, but if you've got to do a phase two inspection, if there's any signs of distress, we want somebody serious to come out to this building, take a look at it, and issue a report. Now, this milestone inspection report then has to be turned over to the building owner and it has to be turned over to the local building official. This isn't that different from what Miami-Dade is doing, except Senate Bill 1702 is statewide, okay? So this is taking something that was happening in a very small part of Florida and it's blasting it out to the entire state, which I'm, I'm, I'm all for, that's fine, I'm good with that. Um, number, let's see, what am I on? Number, that was number four. Uh, number five, copies of the report must be distributed to each unit owner now 1702 says unit owner and i really wish they had put in their unit owner and current resident because i think it's very important for these condo buildings that are mostly owned by investors they're all going to get these reports but the people actually living in the building don't have to get the report under 1702. so i i listen if you're if you're <laughs> if you're listening to this video and you have any power in Senate, in Florida Senate, to make any decisions, please don't slow down or stop Senate Bill 1702 on my account, but maybe for a future amendment, you consider adding residents to the description of Senate Bill 1702. This report should really be put into the hands of the people whose lives could be at risk. Uh, number six, uh, Senate Bill 1702 requires, and I like this, so if you remember in previous reports, in the, in the two previous, two of the four previous reports I talked about, they wanted during real estate transactions that people get reserve studies. And I've already, I mean, reserve studies are great. I sell them, we do them, like they're really good things to have done for a condo, but they're not structural inspection reports. They're not, they're not the same thing. And so that was kind of useless to require real estate transactions to involve transfer of a reserve study. But what Senate Bill 1702 does is it says that it requires all real estate transactions to transmit to prospective buyers all of these milestone inspection reports. And it doesn't say like recent ins milestone inspection reports or the last milestone inspection reports. It's like the entire building's history, <laughs> every milestone inspection report that's ever been done. If you're selling your condo, you must deliver those to the person buying your condo. Um, and then this, and then Senate Bill 1702 goes one step further and it says that it gives the buyer the right to cancel the real estate contract after seeing the milestone inspection report. Now I'm paraphrasing, Senate Bill 1702 doesn't say it exactly like that, but essentially if you're the buyer and you're under contract and regardless of whatever other timeframes or anything else that's going on, if you finally get the milestone inspection report and it's two years old and it says this building's in deleterious condition and needs millions and millions of dollars of repairs, Senate Bill 1702 gives you the right to cancel your contract and get your money back out of escrow. And then the last piece of this uh, Senate Bill 1702 is the fact that they want this thing enacted July 1st of 2022. Now, I don't know if that date's going to get pushed back or not, but I can tell you that Senate Bill 1702 has passed through um subcommittees uh several subcommittees and it has even passed through a couple subcommittee of subcommittees you know you gotta love how our bureaucratic government works but in every every committee that this bill has gone through it has been unanimously unanimously voted yay versus nay so the question then comes up 
if Senate Bill 1702 gets put into place, let's say it gets put into place July 1st, 2022, the questions are, will this bill prevent the next collapse? And so these are just my personal comments. And this is one, it's a great framework. I think Senate Bill 1702 is really good. It's it's probably better. Like it's it's really shocking to me that the law was written better than the than these four major reporting entities recommended be put into the law. I mean, somebody really smart put this law together. And the other thing I like about the law is it's pretty succinct. I mean, in this day and age, we see bureaucrats and senators and legislators writing laws that are just a gajillion pages. Nobody even knows what's in them or, or how to how to work them. This is a very simple, straightforward law. I was able to read it within 30 minutes. I mean, you know, it's, it was nine pages total. It's a very easy read. It's very straightforward, makes a lot of sense. And uh, yes, there's some things they could have clarified or made a little better, but uh, you know, I'm not complaining. It's But while it's a great framework, you have to understand what it's gonna do is it's gonna create these structural inspection reports and it's gonna raise awareness to the owners and so on and so forth. When you look at Champlain Tower South, they had a structural engineering report the residents were aware of the condition of the building for the most part. The board was aware of the condition of the building. People, when they parked their car in the parking garage could look up and be generally aware that something's not right. So the question, big question is, is will Senate Bill 1702 prevent the next Champlain Tower South from collapsing? I'm not so sure. I think it could prevent some future buildings from collapsing because it's raising awareness, because it's improving communication, and because it's making people think of things. I think more so than Senate Bill 1702, it's it's really sad to say, but the, the collapse of Champlain Tower South itself will be the main motivating factor for preventing the next collapse. You understand what I'm saying? We get calls all the time from residents uh, and boards and condos you know, all over our service area in Florida, calling us and wanting, voluntarily wanting structural inspection reports of their buildings because they saw what happened with Champlain Towers South. So that's good. That is, that's the biggest motivator of all for change is, is you've got to change the mentality of people. Again, the, the, the people and residents and board members of Champlain Towers South generally had all the tools they needed to get the building fixed that that can't but nonetheless the can just kept getting kicked down the road um and so i think you know while 1702 will create some laws and it will it is a law that will create some some requirements on boards it will create create requirements on um on engineers and it will improve communication it will improve uh, public awareness, resident awareness of what the condition of their building is. And while it will do all these things, I don't think it, it, it by itself, like I said, will really prevent the next collapse and, it, by itself. And the main reason why is because at its heart, it's a civil law. So who's going to enforce this law? For example, who is going to uh, make sure that the association at the 20 year mark gets their first milestone inspection report. What happens if they don't get their milestone inspection report? I mean, there's literally, I don't, I couldn't, I didn't see anything in Senate bill 1702 or anywhere else in the flat Florida statutes that really uh, assigns any criminal charges, any penalties, any fees, doesn't put the condo into, into some sort of receivership or, or, or the, the, the state government can't come in and take over running the condo. Like none of that is really in there outlined. And so what it does is it creates a civil law structure by which the residents, so let's say a milestone inspection report never gets done. Well, you're now, how do you enforce Senate Bill 1702? Well, now you have to have residents that are aware of Senate Bill 1702. And they're aware that, hey, shouldn't we have gotten a milestone inspection report? And the board says, ah, don't worry about it. And then that resident has to take it upon themselves to hire an attorney and sue the board in order to force them to get the report done. Because again, at the end of the day, Senate Bill 1702 is really about civil law. So I, I again, I am hopeful for the future. I, I like where we're going. I do like seven, Senate Bill 1702. I think a lot of people, a lot of condo boards because of what happened to Champlain Tower South 
have a lot more awareness and a lot more concern. 1702 gives them a framework that they can follow. I think a lot of people will voluntarily follow this, but you're still going to have condo boards out there that want to bury their heads in the sand. They will use the excuse that they can't afford the repairs or whatever, and, and, and you're going to have more buildings, hopefully that don't collapse, but hopefully building officials and engineers can catch these buildings before then and the building officials can have some sort of power to go in there and have the building evacuated until it can be thoroughly assessed and evaluated in the effort of you know public safety and saving people's lives well i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you learned something thanks for watching